I have a vague memory of going to a piano and just kind of improvising when I was around maybe three and just making stuff up that probably sounded like absolutely nothing at all. But the sensation of playing the instrument was very attractive. And nobody was really forcing me or, or making me go to the piano. It's just something that I wanted to, to do. And I think it's from there that I really started playing music. But it wasn't until I was, I remember I was seven years old, and I heard a, a live musical ensemble for, the, for the, really the first time. And it was a band that came to our elementary school, and they were demonstrating what we could sign up for in the third grade. They, they, sh they were showing us what the possibilities were. And this little band that came through just completely blew me away. I mean, it was like a shock. And I remember it was the same for almost all of my, my uh, fellow students, uh, all these second graders. Pretty much everybody wanted to sign up that day to play. And that was just an energizing, uh, very powerful experience. It was, it was very clear that live music was, was the, probably the most powerful way of inspiring someone musically. And I think that, that that was kind of repeated a couple of years later when I joined a youth orchestra for the very first time. I'll never forget the first couple of notes. They were probably the most out of tune <laughs> notes that were ever played. It was the very first day of youth orchestra in, in uh, Berkeley. It was a Berkeley youth, youth orchestra. Um, but it was magical to me. And that's when I knew that I wanted to do something in music. But it was a little bit later that I heard the San Francisco Symphony for the first time when I was nine. That was at Stern Grove, an outdoor concert in the summer with MTT conducting. And that was the moment that I knew I wanted to be a conductor. And all these, these moments were kind of uh, connected with important, for me at least, very, very important live performance experiences. Right after I saw this first concert with the San Francisco Symphony, it was all Gershwin and, and uh, Michael was conducting. I sent him a very, very long letter. It must have been six pages long. And there's this kind of crazy nine-year-old writing this letter. And I, I'm sure it was kind of stalkerish and crazy. But uh, I, I included a couple of things. One, I, I discussed my kind of, uh, at the time, worship for Mozart and Beethoven. And then I also asked for a conducting lesson. And uh, I didn't really expect to get a response, um, it, you know, would go into the crazy pile. But in fact, a couple of weeks later, I got a wonderful letter from Michael. And even though he didn't give me a, a, a conducting lesson in person at the time, he did give me some amazing advice uh, and encouraged me to really broaden my musical world, especially with repertoires. He said, Mozart and Beethoven are wonderful, but what about Stravinsky and Bartok and Prokofiev? And those are all composers that I absolutely love today and conduct regularly. And uh, that, that experience was really got me started. A lot of what conducting is, is kind of mysterious. And on the one hand, you have to study and know every single thing about the piece of music and know every single note in the piece of music itself. But that's kind of separate from the kind of psychological side of conducting. This is this mysterious kind of charismatic element that you have to have in order to really uh, somehow connect with musicians, access their, their music making, and be able to draw out the, their best playing and, and inspire them somehow. And, and so I'm not quite sure when I, I thought that I might be able to do that. And that's something that you're constantly developing and, and working on. But I mean, I think that people who are maybe destined for this particular career, they, they feel it. It's, it's almost like a Harry Potter moment when you hold the, the baton and you have this sensation that something is happening. And then you might see other people that, that are doing this and maybe they're, they're not quite, maybe they're, they're holding the baton and going through the motions, but there's not that kind of magic. And I'm, I, it's something that you learn your whole life. It's something you're always working on. But uh, I think in order to, to especially it's in today's kind of crazy world with millions of concerts and often very little time to really uh, work with orchestras in advance of concerts, you have to have that connection because that's what allows the, the music to, to come together right away.